It can be intimidating to take your first step into foreign cinema. Language barriers. 我跟他最接近的时候，我们之间的距离只有零点零一公分。And cultural barriers. But if you are a cinephile, you probably know more about Asian cinema than you think. Because a lot of your favorite Hollywood movies have elements inspired by Eastern culture. Some more obvious than others. Here is an ode to Asian culture in Western made movies. I know kung fu. Well, you are in the wrong place for that. Anyway, I want to talk about this. You may already know about wire fu, a technique originated in Hong Kong. It's basically actors being pulled by invisible wires. Popularized by The Matrix in the West, it has since been used in many Hollywood movies. What you may not know is that this visual has more cultural significance than just flying. How did you do that? The air. You can't see it, but it fills your lungs. You treat the air the same way. You step on it as you with a stone. You swim through it as you with a sea. And all you have to do is believe. Believe what? It's called Qing Gong. Literally means the technique to be light. It's a martial art technique for scaling obstacles. And in Chinese martial art novels, this technique has been greatly exaggerated to a point where characters can jump on water or even control their own body weight. Explanations for this technique differs. One version says these martial artists can control an unseen life force called qi. Qi. Internal energy. The essence. Life. By manipulating this force in and around them, the martial artists can be lighter than air and gracefully float around like dragonflies. After the release of the Matrix, the visual of Qing Gong continues to evolve. The film you are watching here is called Hero. Director Zhang Yimou takes inspirations from religious war paintings. His characters in Hero flies and glides like the gods and goddesses of China. If you are a fan of The Matrix for its kick-ass action and philosophical stories, then maybe you should give Hero a watch. Now the Force is what gives the Jedi his power. It's an energy field created by all living things. It Surrounds us, it penetrates us, it binds the galaxy together. Didn't we just talk about this? It's no secret that Star Wars takes a lot of inspiration from Asian culture. The Force is pretty much just chi. Instead of lifting the user, it lifts other things. And the lightsaber. <laughs> Katana in space. The connection between Star Wars and Eastern culture is numerous. From the visual design to the fighting to the philosophy behind the iconic weapon. This is the weapon of a Jedi Knight. In Chinese culture, swords are considered a gentleman's weapon. Elegant weapon for a more civilized age. Because it demands skill rather than strength. That lightsaber was Luke's and his father's before him, and now 
It calls to you. Recognizing the owner by the sword. And the one swing, one kill fighting also draws parallel with katana combat. After Star Wars and Kurosawa, Japanese sword movies continues to evolve. One of my favorite, surprisingly, is an adaptation to a manga, Rudoni Kenshin. It's a film about a reformed assassin with a sword that doesn't kill, who must find his own way to protect the people around him. If you want some amazing sword fights or are into the mystics of swords, Rurouni Kenshin comes highly recommended. See the similarity? This is called Bato Jitsu, the sword drawing technique. Basically, quick draw for swords. The origin of the technique is convoluted. One version says it was a technique used by samurai to counter assassination attempts. That's not to say Western quick draw is inspired by Bato Jitsu. He's Shane doing it before Kurosawa. But with Kurosawa's love for Western movies and Sergio Leone's love for Kurosawa, it's safe to say these two genres influence each other. And the parallels is uncanny. The intense stares. The fast and accurate kills. And of course, put a new weapon back. Much like Qing Gong, the art of Bato Zizi gets more exaggerated over time. In popular media, you can often see the objects being cut remains in one piece until the sword is put away. As if reality is too slow for the swordsman. The film you're watching right now is called Satoichi. It's one of the longest running film series ever. And it's still going on to this day. The titular blind swordsman was THE folk hero in the mind of a generation. Much like the Clean East with Cowboy. If you want to see some good action, in a western style folk tale, Satoichi is a great choice. I suggest the 17th entry, Zatoichi Challenged. Anyway, this is called Dim Mark. Not that one. Remember the concept of qi? In Chinese fiction, by interrupting the flow of qi in someone, you can paralyze them, and it can be done with finger injecting qi as well. You can also reverse it by restoring the flow. It's acupuncture, but with the force. The extreme version of it can cause someone to die, and it's referred to as death touch. The five-point palm exploding heart technique from Kill Bill originated from a movie that features the original Pai Mei, but not used by Pai Mei. At least not in the original Chinese version. In Clan of the White Lotus, the technique is called 100 Steps Soul Ripping Palm, and it's used by Bak Nin, who belongs to the same clan as Pai Mei.
When struck by this technique, the victim dies within 100 steps due to the qi being shut down. In recent years though, with Chinese audience wanting more realism in movies, the muck no longer shows up in movies as often, and if it does, it's for comedic effect. But if you don't mind your classic style martial art flicks with some comedy in it, Fongsa Yuk 1 and 2 are two movies to watch out for. Featuring the titular folk heroes of China, played by Jet Li, is an amazing blend of old school action from the Shaw Brothers era and the more up to date story and visual of the Jackie Chan era. So that is some of the gateway films for you to get into Asian cinema, and some background explanations to help you understand them better. But if you still find these concepts overwhelming, well, maybe let yourself get confused. It's like going on a vacation. Where's the fun if you already know everything about it?